In the previous lesson, we have started talking about the present years of DevOps, the DevOps maturity, and the five pillars of DevOps, starting with cloud and CI/CD. In this one, we continue talking about remaining three pillars of DevOps, namely containers, infrastructure as a code, and observability. So let's get started with it. Talking about containers, we now have clear winners. It's pretty much Kubernetes is here to stay. Along with that is Docker, which is the current standard. Uh, however, Kubernetes supports multiple runtimes. So in future, you might see, uh, you know, other runtimes apart from Docker also being used. There is a de decent development with Cryo, which is another runtime which is tightly integrated with Kubernetes. But currently, Docker and Kubernetes are the standard in the world of software delivery. And the reason why we're moving towards a container-based delivery is this basically. So I'll give you an analogy here. So earlier, if you wanted to ship anything from one part of the world to another, you would rely on the kind of goods that you had, the way you package them, the way you transport them, the way you handle them. Everything would depend on the kind of goods that you had, that you were transporting. Now in today's world, as long as you can take those goods and package it in the container, that container box, we are talking about shipping containers. You can take that container, put it on a truck, put it on a train, put it on a ship. It works the same way across the globe. So all the processes are standardized across the globe with containers. And that's the re that's, that's what happens in the software world today. So instead of packaging, deploying your products based on the kind of goods that you have in the software world, the kind of goods that we have are the applications and the languages like Python and Java and Node, which needed a separate way of handling and deploying earlier. But now with the world of containers, we're talking about like software containers and Linux containers and Docker here, where as long as you can package your application in the standard format that Docker offers, it can work the same way everywhere. It could be your laptop, it could be a data center environment, it could be cloud. You can deploy it the same way using Docker and then Kubernetes. And what Kubernetes offers on top of Docker, Docker offers you two things. One is a way to define a standard packaging format. That is one. Second is a runtime to take that package and run it in an isolated environment. Now you can run it on one host with Docker. However, if you want to extend it to multiple servers, you need an orchestration engine which takes your servers and converts it into one logical entity. And that is what Kubernetes says. Kubernetes takes your servers, converts it into one logical entity, and gives you everything that you need in order to run your distributed applications. That includes the ability to scale your applications, ability to uh, you know, define the load balancing, service discovery, high availability and a lot more. And that's why you need Kubernetes in addition to Docker. The only downside with Kubernetes though is the learning curve. And this diagram sort of explains it because if you look at everything else, right? So you have the learning curves for Mesos, Rancher, Swarm, and then there you have a Kubernetes. And that's uh, sort of amusing, but yes, so one, the more you get hang of Kubernetes, uh, the more comfortable you will feel with it and uh, you'll be really amazed with the features that Kubernetes offers really. And that's my personal take about Kubernetes. Even though it looks complex, uh, it's a very interesting technology to learn. In terms of infrastructure as a code, to, as, it's, as things stand today, we have, uh, I my preferred tool here is always has been Ansible since around 2014. Uh, I find it simple, yet extendable, powerful, sophisticated. Um, so, you know, uh, uh, it solves most of the uh, purpose in most of the situations that I've been in. Um, and uh, now that we're talking about Docker and Kubernetes a lot, Ansible makes a lot of sense from the configuration and automation point of view for everything else. Uh, even though Ansible offers you with even the cloud provisioning, like you want to create infrastructure and build it on AWS or Azure or GCP. Ansible can serve purposes in a lot of time, a lot of uh, situations. However, if you're looking for something specialized, you can use tools such as Terraform. Now, I'm just mentioning just a few tools here, but there are many other 
tools which actually fall under the infrastructure as a code category because even if you talk about containers we have docker compose we have kubernetes scripts or code which is again written as code it follows the same declarative syntax it has the similar features of any of these tools uh, have and that's why uh, infrastructure as a code is an important practice in the world of devops and the new field that is emerging on the horizon is the observability so far we've been setting up the monitoring systems such as i spoke about nagios but now the things have changing have been changing and since we are um, moving towards a world with microservices distributed systems um, it's important for us to collect the logs uh, also the metrics that's where the instrumentation is but uh, you know instead of using tools such as nagios and you know graphite uh, we have now um, you know, tools such as Prometheus, which you know, collect multi-dimensional data. Earlier, it was just a timestamp and the data point, but now we have timestamp, data point, the, you can sort it using labels and you can create a multi-dimensional data with the tools such as Prometheus as well. Uh, there is another category of tools which help you find the traces, especially in the distributed systems. Um, you know how your services are doing where the problem is how uh, the flow between one service and another is so all of that information can be found out using traces now these are the three practices and observability systems that you put in uh, to make your infrastructure and applications more observable it doesn't give you it observably doesn't mean that you just go and you know just install a bunch of tools it is also about setting up the culture of observability where you use these tools to infer the issues based on the data that you see in front of you based on your output you infer the state of the system and that is all observability is about uh, if you're talking about tools involved here for logs there is a very um, popular system called as Elasticsearch Logstash Kibana, also called as ELK Stack. So it's a stack of applications which help you collect the logs, index those, and visualize it. And similarly, for metrics, we have Prometheus and Grafana. Again, Prometheus is more like a time series database with multi -di multiple dimensions that you can store, and Grafana is a visualizer for it. For traces, there are a bunch of tools. Uh, some of the tools that I'm familiar with is, is are called as Jagger and Zipkin. Again, you might have to modify your application to send the traces to these centralized systems. And based on that, it provides uh, the telemetry data, which you can look at when uh, to debug certain issues with your applications here. And these are the five fundamental practices of devops and this is the current situation current state of devops as of late 2019 and early 2020 in the next video i'm going to start talking about the future of devops as i see it